Another session of half assitude adventure. And today we're gonna run into the Mackenzie Gallery. And we're gonna look at an exhibition by Don Voisin. Well, Don is one of the from uh, Williamsburg and uh, here's David Dale he's been getting a lot of attention lately some of these smaller paintings are really nice another great thing is the way that uh, off the mat against the shiny. He's a very, uh, very articulate technician. Oh, hey, there's the artist, Don Voisin. We're gonna come back and uh, talk to him when there isn't a bunch of uh, distraction here in the gallery. So we've come back to the uh, McKenzie Gallery to get a little chat with uh, Don Voisin in. Congratulations, Don. The show looks good. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, <laughs> That's James Calm, please. Thank you, James. Yeah. Uh, where are the Gagosian's cards when I need them? Yeah. Well, we're going to take a little uh, kind of a stroll through here, and I wanted to point out some of the uh, features of the work and uh, also maybe talk about... Uh, your practice and some of the other things that you do besides just paint. One of the things that I was, uh, that I've always noticed about the work and that I think is very uh, kind of um, prevalent in this latest batch of work is uh, your use of the matte versus the shiny blacks. You want to talk a little bit about that? It's a very subtle thing, but I think that uh, for people that are serious painters, it's kind of a very interesting aspect of your work. Uh, well, it's a way of uh, creating the space of the paintings. Of, uh, uh, I mean, they're made in layers and sections, so... And this is all oil paint? It's a, yes. Sometimes I'll cheat with acrylic as an undercoat to move things along a little faster. But, uh, they're oil... Uh, there's a, the luminosity of oil paint is uh, very important to me for the richness of the color. <clears throat> this painting is called Mesa. And uh, maybe it's my way of thinking about landscape a little bit. Also, I wanted to mention that you're the, the president of the- No, not anymore. Not anymore. No. American Abstract Artists. So <laughs> you have, you've relinquished that responsibility to someone else. Yes, uh, <clears throat> I did it for eight years. And but that whole heritage of the uh, kind of the New York, uh, I don't know whether you call it geometrical abstraction or uh, formalist abstraction, but that's a very important uh, legacy for you to carry on, right? Yeah, I'm very much interested in, in history. I look at painting all the time, but it's not, 
you know, I'm just as interested in Velasquez or uh, Philip Gustin as I am in John McLaughlin. Uh, I'm not a joiner of groups, but what I really, what attracted me to the American Abstract Artist was uh, just its link to history. Yes, I think it started in something like 1938, 39? 1936. 36. Yeah, this group is 75 years old, and very few artists group, you know, last for more than four or five years. Uh, so it's unusual. Part of it is because it wasn't really a uh, dominant uh, aesthetic ideology. You know, and also there was very little support for, I guess, what you call formalist abstraction at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... Uh, I mean, the same thing is still going on these days with people, um, artists starting galleries and uh, uh, just getting together to support each other, you know, whether to discuss uh, ideas about art or to mount an exhibition. Uh, people working together is, is, has always been very important. Well, one of the other things I thought was kind of uh, nice about this latest show is it seems that uh, You've kind of bumped up your color a little bit, and some of these smaller pieces back here, I think, have got some really nice and uh, juicy colors. I especially like this little, these are not diptychs, but uh, this kind of two paintings together, I think, is very nice. You were kind of mentioning that someone had come in and was talking about your, your X forms and how they're kind of uh, not symmetrical, so they almost give you this sense of. Uh, movement or maybe rotating forms there. There is some, you, you could be kind of a formalist, but there's also a certain amount of kind of playfulness and whimsy and uh, sort of playing with people's expectations of uh, straight lines or hard edges. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's important for me to, as much as the paintings are spatially active and they move in different ways, it's important for me that they still hold a plane so that they, they work as a you know, they're satisfying as an image, and, uh, but they're also, uh, it's important to me that they refer to stuff outside of painting, and uh, sure. often the color comes from things that I see in the outside world, or what well, this painting that you're looking at it was, the image comes from a floor plan. Ah. Uh, it also, you know, could be uh, Mondrian whispering to me. Now, I was wondering, are these, are these areas actually, is this pure black, or are you doing kind of an Ad Reinhardt, uh, nearly black, maybe starting with some other colors and, and ma making them almost black, or is this no, they, pure black? They, they start with black, and then as, uh, especially the shiny, the glossy areas, I do add like some other pigments uh, to, to give it a a warmth or a coolness. Right, it a different color that makes it stand yeah. away from the flat, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very subtle, but it's, it does uh, affect the overall weaving of the painting. Well, we'll come up here and kind of slide by these last two or three pieces. I mean, one of the things in this show is I have four paintings that kind of address ideas about uh, diptychs. I was thinking about that, and the double images and kind of reversing things. Something might be flat in one painting and shiny in another, or yeah. even color contrast things. Mm -hmm. This this painting is <clears throat> two panels that are joined together. Oh, it is. The large uh, diptych is two separate panels. Uh, another painting, uh, which is not a diptych, but I think it uh, addresses those issues, is that vertical yes. painting. Uh, addressing those kinds of combinations. I think this is a great example of how you uh, use very subtle modulations of color and tone and then after you get up and take a little time to look at this it suddenly starts to reveal a very complex, interesting and like we're saying almost a uh, kind of a whimsical game that you're playing with your design elements. Also we were talking about uh, the fact that you paint on wood panels. Now, do you think that affects the way that the uh, the compositions or the, the paint surface ends up in the end? It, it definitely affects the, the look of the paint. Uh, the, the paintings, when I was painting on linen and canvas, the, the paintings were more reticent, 
and then, uh, they reticent? Seem, well, they seem to absorb the light more. Uh-huh, okay. So these are much bolder. Um, but hopefully, you know, the, uh, once it gets your attention, you'll be drawn in to want to look at the, some of the details and the subtleties in the work. And one thing that's important for me to emphasize about my work is that I don't work off of pre-planned drawings. They're really? Worked, they're worked out on the panel in the process of painting them. Uh, once in a while I might have a very simple thumbnail sketch of something that I see, but fitting it into, onto the format of the panel that I choose for it, it's all worked out. Do you, in, do you do drawings or do you work on paper at all? Or? I work on paper, but they're their own thing. They're individual things. Wow. Um, I, my early schooling uh, emphasized, you know, improvisation and, uh, you know, being uh, expressionistic and, and uh, I still work in that way, but in a very uh, much more limited kind of way. But I found a lot more freedom in, by imposing limitations. Well, I'm going to wrap up with a real simple <laughs> sandbag question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Where do you think... Uh, what kind of formalistic abstraction is going today in, uh, in New York and Brooklyn? Do you think there's a revived interest in it? Do you see a lot of young artists that are kind of uh, picking it up and playing around with it? Um, I think so, but I'm not a very good uh, prognosticator. I think, I think that uh, I've never concerned myself with that. Uh, I've done what I've wanted to do all the time, and I've pursued that, and right now people are looking at it. Many years ago they didn't. Um, but that's not really my concern. I, I try to do the best paintings that I can and also what, I, what engages me the most. Um, what people will be looking at in five years from now, I, I have no idea what that will be. All right, Don Voisin, does the show have a title? No. Just recent paintings. Yeah, the paintings all have titles. The okay. one, this one is called Tumble. And we're gonna tumble out of here on that note. Thanks, Don. Thanks. <laughs> Here at the McKinsey Gallery on Orchard Street. And as always, thank you, Kate. Oh, thank you.